welcome to The Watchman. Well, he's back by popular demand and it couldn't come at a better time. Israel is at war with Hamas terrorists in Gaza and the map man, Mark Langfan, is back with us today to give you a unique, cutting-edge view of Israel and its enemies that you have not seen before. Trust me on that. Through his groundbreaking collection of topographic maps and graphics, Mark is, Mark is helping to change the conversation on Israel's security needs. He's a chairman of Americans for a Safe Israel, and you can check out his work on Mark. Langfan.com. Mark, welcome back. It's great to have you back here, my friend. Thanks for now, having me uh, again. Look, the last time we did our map session here in the Watchman map room with you, the, the, the segments went viral in Israel, in Russia, here in America. So it's great to have you back. And so timely, Mark, with Israel at war right now. Now, basically, folks, we're going to talk about why Israel is the first line of defense for Western civilization against radical Islam and why it is so crucial for America to continue to support the Jewish state. Remember what happens over there affects you over here. We're going to show you how. Mark, let's start here with this topographic map. We're in the midst of a war in Gaza. Now Israel is starting to pull back some of its ground forces, but here is Gaza. Those missiles coming out of Gaza are reaching unprecedented length throughout the land of Israel. Tell us about it. Yes, well, there's really uh, three different uh, types of missiles. But before we get there, I just wanted to give a little bit of an overview of where we are in that this is the Jordan Rift Valley. Jordan is on the east side, and the west side is really under Israeli control. And people really have a misapprehension of what the West Bank is in that most people think it's the West Bank of the Jordan River, meaning this green area right over here. But in fact, it's this huge mountain range of Samaria in the north and the uh, mountains of Judea in the south. And Gaza is right down here. So that's really under Hamas control. And this area now is under Israeli control, with Fatah principally right. uh, controlling the small pockets. That and with Hamas elements scattered With Hamas throughout. elements ready to take over the yes. minute Israel were to leave. Now the key to the whole understanding is once you understand that this is the green line, that if Israel were forced by President Obama to go back to this green line, there would be 10 miles between the green line and the Mediterranean for what is under this blue patch 70% of Israel's Jewish population and 80% of Israel's industrial base is in this rectangle that's 10 miles wide. In this Tel Aviv metro area. Metro, Mark, metropolitan. say that again. 70%. That is the heart of this whole debate. 70% of the Israeli population, 80% of industrial centers right here, just about 10 miles from those mountains that the Obama administration would like to give to the Palestinians. And oh, by the way, here's Ben Gurion Airport. Exactly. So now that we understand uh, that, let's talk about up to now what had been going on. Up to now, you had had relatively short range rockets fired out of Gaza, out of Gaza. and some longer range rockets fired out of Gaza. But there has been a game change in this last conflict. And if we can, I'd like to segue over sure. to this graphic. And by the way, all of these graphics are going to be on a, a link so that you can click on. Yes, marklangfan.com. Okay, so on this map, basically, the Palestinians had, that, had these short-range rockets and these longer-range rockets. Now, these rockets had gone about 20 to 40 kilometers. In the last conflict, in 2012, the rockets basically reached 70 five kilometers or wow. 50 miles. That's just a year and a half ago. That's a year and a half ago, in uh, late 2012. Yes. Okay, now what has happened is, thanks to Iran, Hamas has now gotten rockets that are 150 kilometers or basically 100 miles. Now, remember, if you go back to this map, this is the blue patch. Right. Okay. 70 percent uh, of Israel's of population, population. In here. So now let's uh, transfer that concept of 70% to this red rectangle here. Un 
inside of this rectangle is where the lion's share, the 70% of Israel's population is, and Ben-Gurion is really just to the south of this rectangle. Wow. So what you're having is you're having these rockets now not only pummeling the south part of that right. rectangle, you're having the rockets cover the entire part of the rectangle. Uh, up to practically the up Lebanon to Haifa. border. Uh, up, up to, to Haifa. Le up to Haifa. That is the game change. So what has happened... In the past year and a half, in really, the past this game year change went down, Mark. This yeah. game change went down, and we'll talk about how that occurred. Now, these 302s, these M302s, tell us about them. Well, the M302s, if we go to this next uh, graphic, you can get an idea of the varying sizes of the rockets that are uh, pummeling Israel. If this is a six-foot man, up to here, these rockets are the ones that go about 20 kilometers. These or, smaller these ones. Smaller these smaller ones. These stay wrote and the, the right. communities surrounding the Gaza Strip, the Israeli community. Exactly. And these have been the uh, really the bread and butter of the Palestinians to, yes, up, to up until recently. Up until recently. Yeah. Then in 2012, they got this larger missile. And this the larger, Fodger 5. The Fodger 5. And the Fodger 5 uh, could go the uh, 75 kilometers. Okay? To Tel Aviv and beyond. To, te to Tel Aviv, to the Tel Aviv uh, arc. Okay. Okay, just south of Tel Massive Aviv. Massive population centers, industrial centers. Exactly. But not the whole. Sure. Rectangle. Right, right. What has changed is this puppy. Wow. The M302. Now, to give everybody a concept, what I've done is I've taken these two sort of just discs. One is just, just to pe for people to get an idea. This is a CD disc. And everybody should just go home and take a, a tape measure. This is 122 millimeters mm. wide. This is the width, this is the diameter of these smaller rockets. Okay. So everybody understands what's so going smaller. on. So they're smaller, you're right, right. So they're smaller, okay, to get everybody, and these things carry about 40 pounds. Small but deadly. Small but down, deadly. Very deadly. They carry 40 pounds of explosive right. in this missile. Can you imagine, okay. just if you lift... You do a curl yeah. of 40 pounds, and you go see how much 40 pounds is. Yeah. Okay, now, what is up with these rockets? Well, the 302, there's no mystery why it's called 302. It's 302 millimeters wow. in diameter. Look at that difference. So here, you take a tape measure. You go 302. This is the diameter the diameter of the rockets that are being fired now wow. against that Tel Aviv you have a Netanya corridor. Yeah, and the next, now the next graphic. Oh, one more where critical thing is. Sure. This rocket carries 150 kilograms of warhead, or close wow. to 330 pounds wow. of warhead. And this is being fired this into the Tel Aviv area now. Into the te this and is beyond Tel Aviv. And beyond Tel Aviv. And into Jerusalem. Into and Jerusalem, Jerusalem. The whole, now, okay. Now, here's, the, here's the, the rub here. Where are these rockets coming from, Mark? I think the next graphic shows us. And it's no surprise to and you and I. No shows us. Maybe to the Obama administration. Uh, this, is, this, this is the core of the problem. This is not a Hama. The, the, the falsity of this entire debate is the way Obama, the Obama administration has phrased this. It is the Hamas against Israel. It is not Hamas against Israel. It is Iran and Hamas yes. and Qatar and yeah. Turkey against yeah. Israel. It is a proxy war. It is a proxy war. And what is going on is Iran has been sending these 302 missiles to Israel. In fact, in March of this year, uh, many of you might remember Israel was forced to intercept yeah. uh, a, a Panamanian flagged ship called the Klaas Sea yes. in, the, in, Red the, sea, in, right. in, in the Red Sea. In the Mediterranean, right. In the Red Sea. And in that ship were 40 M302s, which are the 302 millimeter rockets, right. the very same rockets that are now being fired against 
Israel. Iranian-made rockets. The Iranian regime's fingerprints, folks, are all over these lethal new rockets that Hamas is firing into practically every inch of Israel right now. So the key point is, if Israel had not, A, known about this, and B, intercepted it, these 40 would have been now in Israel yeah. being fired against Israel. Doing untold damage. Untold damage. Ben Gurion Airport. Mark, we've got to go to the break right now. We're going to leave it right there. We've got to go to the commercial. Coming up, folks, have you heard of a fuel air bomb and the threat that poses to Israel with these long-range rockets? You won't believe this. Stay tuned. Much more coming up with Mark Langfan. Great graphic maps. Stick around. And welcome back to The Watchman. We're here with Mark Langfan, marklangfan.com, uh, chairman of Americans for a Safe Israel. Uh, Mark, tell us about these Kaibar rockets uh, and the potential of a fuel air explosive. I don't know much about this. Enlighten me, enlighten everyone at home. Well, first of all, why did uh, always the names of missiles are very, very important? And why did Iran call this missile the Kaibar missile? It's because of the Battle of Kaibar. Muhammad defeated a whole bunch of Jews who were living just east of Medina. Mm -hmm. And so that was the Battle of Kaibar where he basically yeah. defeated the Jews. Yeah. And radical so, jihadists today still shout, Kaibar, Jews that Kaibar, are coming that for you again. It was a seminal are, moment that for that. Is a and that's yeah. why this is called the Kaibar missile. Yeah. But just remember, this puppy has got this diameter yeah. and is 20 feet high. Right and weighs close 20 to feet a, high. 20 feet high. And they're firing these things, and it takes about 20 minutes to get it ready to, to zoom off. Yeah. But the key difference between the 122 millimeter and the 302 millimeter and why it's the game changer yeah. is as follows. This, the, uh, the Katusha, it can carry chemicals, but nobody's right. going to be firing chemicals, essentially, from the Gaza right. Strip. This is the key. With the 302, there are varying types of warheads. Uh, and the key game changer warhead it is what is called the fuel air explosive warhead. Now, I am not saying that the, Gaza, the Hamas currently has right. the fuel air warhead. However, they are firing 302s, which in the next war could very well have a fuel They're air warhead. They're capable. This they shows you capable. the danger. This shows people danger. the danger that Israel is facing, and so supplied what, by Iran once again. So what is a fuel air bomb? It is called, it is called a poor man's nuclear bomb. Now, why is it called a poor man's nuclear bomb? Because it's named fuel air. What it does is when it is fired, Close to the ground, it releases a cloud of gas, of mm. fuel. And the fuel mm. spreads like a cloud. And then mm. a couple of seconds later, after the fuel spreads to about 100 meters, 100 meters, which is a football field, mm -hmm. okay, a football field in diameter, there is a secondary charge that ignites the cloud. Okay, now what happens when you have a fire cloud, it absorbs all of the, it sucks up like a vacuum, all of the oxygen underneath the cloud. And you have right here, Mark, gas cloud fire burst causes vacuum, it instantly ruptures it, human lungs, it, causing it, suffocation and death within minutes. Death within minutes to everybody within that 100 meter uh, diameter uh, things. So, getting back to this, remember, this on the scale of my map is the range of the Kaibar. So you are talking this entire rectangle will be under the threat of a poor man's nuclear bomb. Wow. And this is what Israel is now facing. Where, and this is really the game changer. And this is the technology to carry this fuel air bomb out, Mark. Is it relatively easy to figure out for these Absolutely. guys? Absolutely. Absolutely. 
And the only uh, thing that's stopping this type of importation of this kind of weaponry is, in fact, the blockade that is what has been keeping yeah, the blockade, the of, blockade Gaza. of Gaza. I mean, Why is Israel blockading Gaza? Israel's not blockading Gaza right. of humanitarian uh, yeah. goods, of food, of necessary things. Right. They're blockading Gaza because if they didn't blockade Gaza, instead of hundreds, uh, there was a briefing yeah. uh, in June where the head of military intelligence said there were hundreds of missiles that could hit, that could go yeah. as far as uh, Hadera. Which is north of Tel north Aviv. North of Tel Aviv. We, we got to leave it right there, my friend. I'm going to call you Professor Mark Langfan. <laughs> you're right at home doing this. And again, when you're blockading Gaza, you're essentially blockading Iran from getting missiles that's, into Gaza. That's exactly what Much you're doing. Much more on that and the crucial role Israel plays in America's security coming up after the break. Don't move. Welcome back. We're talking to Mark Langfan. He's got the fantastic, amazing collection of topographic maps, regional maps. Mark, tell us, a, look, we've, we've talked about so much. You, you've nailed it down to its barest essence today. You've broke it down for us in such a compelling way, understandable way, too. This map now, this graphic map, shows the larger picture, what Israel is facing. Break it down for us. Well, about 25... I've been doing this 25 years, and about 21 years ago, I was in a congressman's office, and after I showed my Katusha rocket piece, he said, well, okay, now I understand why the West Bank is important for Israel, but why is Israel important for the United States? And I said to him, what you're really saying is not an Israel with or without the West Bank, you're saying oh, Israel at all. And he said, that's exactly what I'm saying. And so... I said, well, you know, Israel is here, and I saw he really didn't understand it, so I went home and I made this map. And basically, the, the, the lie is that Israel is the cause of instability in the Middle East, and Israel is the cause of high gas prices, okay? So about 21 years ago, I made this map, and I said, okay, you think you've got, if Israel somehow is not there, we're told that if Israel's not there, all of these problems are going to be solved. Right. So I said, okay, let's they'll make... They'll leave us alone. They'll, they'll, they'll leave, leave us alone. alone. <laughs> okay. So basically what I did was I said, okay, let's make believe Israel's not there. What's going to happen? Well, is Lebanon an independent country? No, it's occupied by Syria slash Hezbollah. So does anyone think that Israel would... Uh, Pal Palestine is going to be able to fight off Egypt and, Le right. and Syria slash Hezbollah? No. That's step number one. 21 years, no one could possibly touch that step. Step number two, Israel has been protecting Jordan from Syria, and now Israel is protecting Jordan from ISIS. ISIS. Because could Talk you about a game changer. This is a game changer, because could you imagine if Jordan was faced by ISIS to the north and by a West Bank Hamas ISIS yeah. state to the west? Yeah. It'd be finished. King Abdullah is quaking in his boots right now. Quaking in, in his boots. So now this is the key. With those two steps that are undeniable, all of a sudden, Saudi Arabia comes into view. Uh -huh. Because you've got Egypt with 85 million people, Syria slash ISIS slash Iran to the north. How long would it be before right. Saudi Arabia goes? And the Saudis zero. know it. And the Saudi so what is really going on when you're reading the news is there is, in effect, the creation of an embryonic uh, de facto, and maybe even close, close, hopefully, to a de jure alliance of the moderate Muslims. And when I say moderate, yeah. I am yeah, right. putting a quotation mark <laughs> exactly. on it. Exactly. I mean, there's moderate, and then there's you've got degrees, ISIS yeah. and Iran. Exactly. So we have to make our choices. Yes. We can't live with the world we love. We have to love the one you're with. Yeah. <laughs> so all of a sudden, when you look at this, you realize that Israel is the backbone of what is a moderate Sunni Muslim bloc. Which would be Egypt, Jordan, Saudi Arabia, the Emirates. And the Emirates, exactly. And this is what Obama apparently is fighting against. Yeah. Instead <laughs> of supporting yeah. this, he's supporting Qatar and Turkey yeah. that are undercutting this. Which are Hamas's chief financiers and supporters. Chief of, along with Iran. Along with, of course. So he's supporting the bad guys. Yes. Instead of supporting the good guys and having a stable ring yeah. of moderate uh, 
uh, Muslim countries, yeah. he's supporting the brotherhood. Uh, the brotherhood and Iran. And Iran. So what this does is it basic what. It, it basically brings into focus that Israel is not the cause of instability. Israel is the cornerstone yes. of stability Ugh. of the West's existence. First line of defense for Western civilization, canary in the coal mine. and last line. Yes. Because if this goes down and becomes a caliphate, we all you've go got down. Cyprus right here. Yeah, we, we all go down. And, and look, we Jordan, Saudi Arabia, folks, you have to remember, if Israel was wiped off the map, we know it's not going to happen. If it were to be wiped off the map, the jihadists would not stop there. Israel is the little Satan. We are the great Satan in their view. Israel is just a small step to the larger prize, us. You think it doesn't matter what happens over there? It does. Think again. Coming back, we're going to wrap up with Mark Lanfan after the break. Stick around. More to come. Welcome back. We're wrapping up with Mark Langfan. You can find his incredible maps and graphics at marklangfan.com. Also, AFSI.org. Check it out. Americans for a Safe Israel. Mark, thanks so much for being with us today. Illuminating, enlightening. Uh, final thoughts. Final thoughts is everyone watching, I urge you, I plead with you, go on my website, look at the graphics. This is not a Jewish issue. This is a Christian issue. This is an American issue. This is a Muslim issue yeah. because we are, we have, th this is not the 70s anymore. Right. Any Muslims watching this show, yeah. we, Israel is defending Muslims. Yeah. My, Israel absolutely. is defending the Sunnis. Yes. And we have to understand and communicate to everybody that everybody's got skin in the game. Yeah. And you broke it down in a fantastic way, Mark. Easy to understand. Mark, thanks so much. And until next time, thanks for joining us here on The Watchman. God bless you. And remember, never hold your peace. <laughs>